July 20th? That's way too soon. Ladies, gentlemen, and Herodrum of all ages, Diablo 4 has, crazy to say, been out for around a month and a half now. People have gotten a ton out of the game so far, and while we can all agree that it has its rough edges for sure that need some smoothing over, I don't think that I'm alone in saying that I really, really enjoy this game. Personally, I love it, and while I see other people saying things like they're taking a short break before season one because it feels like more progress right now just doesn't really mean much, I'm that weird person who is so attached that I made a new character and I've just been slowly leveling it just a little bit in my spare time because I like it, I like playing the game, I find it fun, I don't know. The point being, the game is a really good time and season one is right around the corner. So while there are absolutely people who are just sort of waiting for the season to happen, there are still a number of things that you can make sure that you've done to be as ready for the season as possible. So today I'm going to give you all a recap of everything that you can do in Diablo 4 on the Eternal Realm to help prepare your Season 1 characters, after which we'll also go over everything that we currently know about Season 1 so far so that you can prepare yourself mentally for what is to come as well. In other words, this is a full Season 1 preparation guide both for the things that you can actively do in the game and just to make sure that you know everything that's relevant before the season starts. It's worth noting before we dive in that we are of course expecting a blog post on the 18th along with a balance patch that will add new info on top of this too. We'll of course be making videos and all that stuff as well, but this is just to catch you all up on everything that we know before that happens in case you've missed anything up until now. So first up, let's talk about in-game. What can you actually do currently to help your Season 1 character? First things first, it's pretty much just the obvious ones. Make sure you have at minimum completed the campaign once. You must have completed the campaign to engage with any seasonal mechanics when the season starts, and while some people will choose to do the campaign in the season, and there's nothing wrong with that, many people would rather just skip this and get right into the meat of the season itself and the seasonal quest line. so if you're one of those people, just make sure that you've done the campaign at least once yourself. Past that, there are the Altars of Lilith. These are a pretty tedious activity, clearly meant to be more of a collectible mechanic as they're just sort of lit around the map, tons of them around, and generally not close to each other, essentially just a reward for exploration, but the thing is, though, interacting with each one gives you a permanent stat bonus, which is obviously important, it makes a pretty big difference. They also give you Renown, which is another avenue to power, through bonus skill points, paragon points, as well as extra max potions for your character. Most people are very aware of this system in general, but given that your progress with these will carry over to seasonal characters, if you are someone who has avoided collecting all the altars, now is probably a really good time to do it, as it is something that you can do on the Eternal Realm that will carry over. As well, there is map discovery, simply walking into each Fog of War area on the map and clearing it out. This also translates to more renown and also will carry over to seasonal characters. So if you haven't done it as of yet, for whatever reason, now is a really good time to do so, especially as completing both of these activities fully will let any seasonal character that you create start off with the first two renowned tiers for each region already complete, which means a total of five bonus skill points and five bonus maximum potions. Those are all the main things then that you can actually physically do in the game, and of course a lot of that is just stuff that players have already done. So what else can you actively do on characters to prepare? Well, first, it's a bit of an obvious one, consider which class that you actually want to be playing, and maybe even what build. Obviously with the big balance patch that is incoming right before the season, it might change your thoughts on that a bit, but make sure that you put the time in to actually work out what you want to do, so that when the season starts you aren't sitting there paralyzed with choice instead of just jumping right in. Past that, a bit of a niche recommendation, if you are planning to play druid like I am, spend just a few minutes, create a bunch of them with different hair colors. I know it sounds weird, but druid transformations, especially bear form more than wolf form, take into account your hair color and it is the largest factor for how your forms will look, so given that you won't realistically spend much time in human form, at least later on in the game, you should probably check out what the forms look like in relation to these different hair color options and pick the one that you like the most. My personal favorite is white hair, which makes your bear look like a polar bear, and that's definitely what I'm going to be running. Past that, there isn't too much that you can really do to prepare in the server itself. I'd say for any level 100 characters out there, you maybe should have a go at the Uber Lilith challenge boss if you haven't yet, just because it will get a lot easier to do in Season 1 once we have the Malignant Hearts, so if you want to experience the true challenge that was originally intended, now is the time to do so. That's pretty much every way that you can prepare in the game, so now let's go over all the information that we know already about Season 1 so far to prepare mentally. Prepare your brain, rather than your account. For seasons as a whole, in order to partake in them properly, you will need to create a new character on the Seasonal Realm, meaning yes, you will be starting again from level 1. Season 1 is the Season of the Malignant. Our current knowledge is that the season will last from July 20th until October 9th, 11 and a half weeks. It is focused around what is essentially a sort of plague that was released after we killed 
called Lilith, and with Anarius also defeated, no longer around to protect Sanctuary from it. This has resulted in the entire open world being littered with these little yellow egg sacs. They are in dungeons as well, and these will spread a corruption. Some of them in the open world may even buff enemies we don't know 100% yet. Corrupted creatures of all kinds become known as malignant. It makes them stronger, it makes them more aggressive, and if you come across what is known as a partly corrupted elite enemy, a stronger version of a regular elite that will have a bonus affix related to the heart type that they have on them, and then you kill them, a malignant heart will drop on the floor. If you then interact with it, it will spawn an even harder version of that elite, known as a malignant elite. This will have the properly activated version of that affix. The best example that we've seen is this brutal malignant elite that gives a shield buff occasionally and also gives a shield to its allies, like the champion monsters that are in World Tier 3 and above that have the defensive auras. We assume that vicious malignant elites will have an offensive focused buff, and we don't know yet what the other two types will do as far as what they'll do to the elites. If you kill the power boosted resurrected malignant elite, it will drop an actual caged heart, which is the version of a malignant heart that you can pick up, put in your inventory, and slot into your jewelry. These are the main mechanical upgrade to our characters for the entirety of Season 1. Malignant hearts are an item, much like gems, but instead of having statistical increases on them, they instead have powers, much like legendary aspects. As of right now, we have only seen the effects of three malignant hearts out of 32. One of them is essentially a combination of two pre-existing druid-specific legendaries into one effect that all classes can use. One of the ones that we've seen is a barbarian-specific effect that gives you a ton of bonus crit chance if you spend enough fury fast enough, which is quite strong and interesting as well. One of them is a wrathful heart, which is one of the super hearts, and this rotates between effects every 20 kills that you get. One effect is 22% bonus attack speed, one is a 17% chance when using a core or basic skill to fully restore your resource, and one is an 88 damage holding barrier. This requires level 20 to use, so the 88 damage barrier is actually pretty small, but the other two bonuses when active are quite good. 22% attack speed is quite a lot of attack speed, and a 17% chance to restore your full resource is quite strong for most builds. So whenever you cycle into one of those two heart powers, one of those effects it will actually be really good. The barrier one is pretty mad though, let's be honest. Every character will have three slots in which to put these malignant hearts. Specifically, one for each of your jewelry slots, one in your amulet, and one in each of your rings. When a ring or amulet drops during Season 1, it has a chance of spawning with a socket, and instead of the regular sockets on the Eternal Realm, these will be something called infested sockets. These will spawn in one of three colors, purple, orange, or blue. Purple sockets are called devious sockets, orange ones are called vicious sockets, and blue ones are called brutal. The reason for this is that certain malignant hearts can only go in these specific slots. There are 32 malignant hearts total being added into the game, and there are four categories of malignant heart. Presumably, that means that there will be eight of each type. Some of them will be class-specific, some of them will apply to every class. Devious malignant hearts can only go in devious sockets, vicious ones can only go in vicious sockets, and brutal ones can only go in brutal sockets. Pockets, but there is a fourth type of heart called Wrathful. In theory, these are the most powerful ones of the bunch, having the strongest possible effects. These can be put in any infested socket, regardless of its color, regardless of its type. If a piece of jewelry does not have a socket when it spawns in Season 1, you can add a socket to it, just like you could in the Eternal Realm, and when you do so, it will randomly roll which color the socket will get. You can also craft malignant hearts once you get far enough into the seasonal quest line. We have this graphic pop up in one of the preview videos that actually shows you being able to craft three of the types of malignant hearts. We thought that you would be able to craft Wrathful because it wasn't in this menu, but in theory, according to this graphic that's released by the developers, you can actually also craft the Wrathful hearts, though we see no way of doing that within the UI that's shown here, so just keep in mind that that may actually be possible. Crafting these is done by salvaging the ones that you don't use, and crafting one type of heart requires the materials you would get from salvaging the other two types combined together. Outside of crafting, the malignant hearts will come from drops from the malignant elites. While any elite in Sanctuary has a chance of becoming partly corrupted, turning into a malignant one when it dies and you spawn it again, there are also going to be new dedicated activities added to the game called Malignant Tunnels. In these, there is a significantly increased rate of malignant elites happening, meaning a much higher drop rate of malignant hearts as well than any other type of content. At the end of Malignant Tunnel, you will get an invoker room. This will be a big sort of gloopy gobule in the middle with two sacks that come off of it. The sacks will each be a different color, which matches the type of malignant heart. Here, you will use an invoker, which is an item
item that you can craft on the specific color of sack that you want to heart from. Then it will start an invoker event. At the end of this event, you are guaranteed to get a malignant heart of the type that you chose. As well, within these tunnels, you are likely to find the new boss being added with the season, Varshan the Consumed, who will likely also be a part of the main quest line for the season. Speaking of which, that is of course called the seasonal quest line, which is just a brand new bit of story content to fit in with the season itself, and it is how we will unlock a lot of the seasonal mechanics. This is being headed up by Cormund, a new NPC who is crucial to this plot, and his proper base will be where we do the malignant heart crafting, and it will also have a stash that we can access right beside it, which is pretty convenient. However, I do have a lot of concerns as these malignant hearts seem to actually take up inventory spaces, one inventory space per heart, so if we don't get more stash space, that can become a problem really quick. Then there is also the seasonal journey. This is a set of objectives split across seven chapters. Some of them are easy, some of them are a bit more time consuming, but you must complete a certain number of objectives per chapter to unlock that chapter's rewards and also progress to a further chapter. These rewards include things like favor to advance your battle pass, caches of materials of various kinds, as well as jewelry. We know that we will also get at least one scroll of amnesia from the season journey, which is a new item that resets your skill points and paragon board completely for free, allowing one easy build swap. I really hope that we get more than one though, because obviously if you want to swap builds, you want to do it more than once and only getting one would sort of feel like a tiny slap in the face, but you know, it is what it is. Then aside from that, you will also get a bunch of legendary aspects, which will be added to your codex of power. Among these are seven brand new legendary aspects never before seen in the game. The two that we have seen are a barbarian one affecting charge and a druid one that makes poison creeper apply a circle of landslide. We know that there are three more class specific new aspects, one for each of the other classes, as well as two legendary aspects that are for every class that are new as well. There are five legendary aspects added to your codex per chapter of the season journey, and all the ones that aren't in those new seven are pre-existing legendary effects that we already had that you could previously only find on drops, not in the codex. So this is simply existing to make it easier to apply certain aspects that were otherwise harder to find. On top of that, there will also be six new uniques added to the game. We don't know anything about them at the moment, but my personal guess is that it will be one new one per class, and then one new unique that everyone is able to use as well. Aside from that, we have the seasonal blessing system. Through this, you can spend smoldering ashes to give yourself a boost to all seasonal characters for the duration of season one. One of these boosts is bonus XP from monster kills. The one is bonus gold from vendor sales. One is higher chance at rare materials from salvaging. One is boosted duration of elixirs. And one is a higher drop rate of the more powerful malignant hearts. Each of these has four levels of upgrade. And so you could spend four smoldering ashes on each one. You get the first smoldering ashes at level eight in the battle pass. And this is part of the free track. It will also require you to be level 35. And each of the smoldering ashes that you get will require a higher level requirement to actually be able to use. This means that no matter whether you purchase the battle pass or not, everyone will be able to use these smoldering ashes and purchasing advanced versions of the battle pass where you get level boost won't actually help you unless your character is also much higher level. Our most recent look suggests that the first one will require you to be level 35 to use. As an example, we've not had any official confirmation on the exact number of smoldering ashes that we will have, but we know that there are 27 free tiers in the battle pass. It is possible that we get 20 of these as smoldering ashes, which would be enough for every upgrade, but I consider it unlikely they'd only give seven free cosmetics to people. So I imagine we'll more likely get in the range of 16, maybe 12 in absolute minimum. Not enough to get every upgrade, so considering which ones that you will want in these seasonal blessings will likely be quite important. I would say that getting XP early on is obviously a big deal. You probably want to do that first. Getting malignant heart drop chance increase is incredibly important later on, as you'll want the powerful ones in the end game. You'll probably also want the gold increase one at some point, just to get a bit more of a bank built up, especially as your gold will merge back to the eternal realm once the season ends. The other two are ones that you can live without, at least in my opinion. Rare crafting materials aren't the hardest to come by already in the base game, and elixir duration is not a massive deal either to me. Of course, there is also the battle pass itself, entirely your choice whether you wish to purchase it or not, as everything in the premium track is entirely new cosmetics. Nothing is power-based. They made a big point of saying that the game is not pay to win, and I hope that we stick to that for the rest of the lifetime of Diablo 4. That's it then, everyone. The few things that you can do ahead of time to prepare your account itself for the release of season one, then also a recap of everything we currently know about the season itself, its activities, how you'll be interacting with it to prepare your mind for what is to come. We know that there is a big balance patch as well as more information about the season itself, likely dropping quite soon after this video, probably even tomorrow. And of course we'll be covering that as well, but this is just a preparation guide, a roundup of the things that we know before that so that you can confidently move forward, feeling as ready as possible for what is to come. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time.
stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye